Welcome, dear friends, dear colleagues, dear seafarers, dear academia and researchers. To can you hear? Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Welcome. Welcome. First of all, thank you so much for this opportunity opportunity to get me this live session. We are very happy to meet you. So yeah. I'm I'm from India, Mumbai. Wow. So nice. So we are beginning now the webinar Introduction to My Time Coaching, Three Pillars for Wellbeing on and Offshore. And I introduce you my colleagues, uh, Ms. Alexandra Bodito. Uh, she will tell you some words about her. Uh, I am Christina Dragomir. I am Associate Professor at Constanza Maritime University. And uh, thirdly is Ms. Alexandra Chukanu that you will soon meet uh, also. Dear Alexandra, what can you tell us about you? Which one? <laughs> <laughs> good, very good question. Correctly. <laughs> okay. uh, let me just uh, stop this share and uh, leave you to introduce yourself. Okay. Let me pin the video. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Alexandra Bonita. <laughs> hello, and uh, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here on a Saturday. And um, I'm really excited to, to be here with you and to share a little bit about uh, coaching and personal and professional development. I myself am a um, writing and self-esteem coach and also a storytelling and creativity expert. I have been coaching a lot, uh, mostly uh, with women, because it's uh, my passion to help women to be a part of all the industries and to have a voice. Um, I'm also the director of a global woman community, which is called Global Woman Club. And um, I'm the director of the uh, regional club here in Bucharest. And um, I love writing. I love uh, everything that has to do with the power of expressive writing, journaling, as well as creative writing, storytelling. And you will see that they are, um, writing is also a very powerful tool that we are going to uh, use in some of the exercises today. So I invite you to please have next to you a pen and a piece of paper because we're going to do a little bit of writing. So, um, Welcome to today's webinar, and I'm looking forward to connecting with you. Thank you very much, Alexandra. Now let's meet the, uh, the other Alexandra, uh, Miss Alexandra Chikanu. Let me just pin uh, your screen. Okay, you should know that uh, Miss Alexandra Chikanu is already on the vessel. She's in Singapore. Alexandra, hello. Good evening, everyone. I, I hope you... You understand me, I hope my internet works properly <laughs> as I am in Singapore now in the OPL language. Well, as from my side, um, I started this maritime career in 2015 when I joined first time in the ship. But actually the journey started before this. It started with the Naval Academy in 2013. And uh, as soon as I have stepped on board a ship and I understood what kind of power this gives to a woman, I couldn't quit. So I became an officer. Now I'm working in a company that is so much woman friendly and uh, I like to see women empowered. Now on the bridge team we are three girls, three amazing females which give a little bit of salt and pepper <laughs> to the team and it's quite amazing to see that this kind of webinars are happening because when I started my career this kind of events were happening only in the west part of the world, the west Europe, USA and to be honest I didn't have the required English to understand what those people were saying so take this webinar as a big opportunity to learn something new about how to mindful yourself about how to coach yourself and how to self-develop as for me now I love to read a lot of self-development books and not just this and of course I love this job <laughs> being on board and um, it is so nice to see that we have so many people around us who want to, to build themselves in a good way, in the correct way. That's great. Thank you very much also, Alexandra. And uh, let's see now uh, our first part, our introductory part. I will uh, 
share sc screen again the presentation and I will begin with the theory part. We need some theory to start this uh, webinar. So, about me, uh, I, in short, uh, so I just uh, told you before, I am associate professor at Constanza Maritime University and I have a scientific expertise in maritime gender uh, leadership, uh, management, also transport technologies. And in order to better understand the way I started the research on gender and leadership, I will tell you just a few things about a previous project where I was the leader. And the project was called Gender Equality and Cultural Awareness in My Time Education and Training, GCAMED. And uh, this session is live broadcasted on Facebook, GCAMED. Why this uh, project, this research project was important? because it was founded uh, by grant, academic grant, by the International Association of Maritime Universities and the Nippon Foundation. And uh, I had this incredible, amazing team of researchers. In total, we were 10 researchers from universities joining the International Association of Maritime Universities. And they were coming from nine countries and four continents. And they helped me a lot to uh, better understand the issues of uh, maritime women and not only this, to understand better cultural awareness and leadership. Therefore, I will make uh, the introduction based on their own expertise that helped me also to gain knowledge, more knowledge in this uh, domain. For start, in maritime transport, there are three categories of important persons. Those are leaders, managers, and coaches. And there are some distinct differences between them. But what is more important is that they are complementary entities. They are dis distinguished by their motivation, by the way they think, and by the way they act. Compared to short cases, which might be familiar to those that are not doing seafaring, Onboard ship managers run organizational techniques that are adapted to the particularities of shipping. And from this point, we should discuss which are those particularities of shipping. There is so much to talk about, but I will synthesize in only this, uh, this um, affirmation. Shipping and working on board vessel means working inside a closed environment. Some researchers say the ship can be compared to a total institution, an institution where you face the same persons for a long period of time, uh, an institution where your family is somewhere be beyond, beyond, somewhere on shore, and you have to do your job. On board vessel, the master is the manager with a formal role of planning, organizing all the five functions of the management, including coordination and motivation and evaluation. In the case of engine deck, the equivalent for the master is the position of the chief engineer. Based on studies of other researchers, it was found that on certain vessels, it is not the master or the chief engineer that holds the position of leader. Instead of the, such situation, some persons with very strong personalities are perceived as informal leaders. And I prepared for you a table to better understand what is the difference between leadership and coaching. I searched for some analysis criteria and I mentioned some of them. And from the point of view of the scope, there are distinct facts between leadership and coaching. First of all, the leader has the motivation and is effectively conveying team objectives. In fact, leadership and coaching are very different activities. Leadership, for example, is about effectively conveying team's objectives, motivating them, moving them in a specific direction. He also manages complex situations. A leader usually 
has the power to make decisions that directly influence the outcome of his team. A leader operates on a less personal level, level. Usually, we can select our coach, but we cannot select our leader. It is usually the other way around. Leaders set the tone of the organization. They know how things will go. They create the vision and inspire teams toward the vision. Leaders are only successful if they get results, and they get those results through people. Leaders have the authority to require results from people by performance plans, while coaching is related to the accompaniment of people. In a coaching process, we do not lead, we do not guide, and neither we decide what the team or the coachee, either individual or by group, has to do. But rather, the coach will accompany the person so that they become aware of their skills and abilities by themselves. The coaches will achieve the goal set or find the growth they want. So in this case, the result depends 100% on the coaching. A coach takes a personal approach and applies a method of listening, clarifying and prompting intentional thought. The coach promotes action and behavior changes the path the push the coach beyond perceived limitation. It is understood that a coach cannot see his or her own genius, and the coach can and proceeds to tease that genius out from behind the curtain. Coaches create a picture or ideal for the coachee to live. However, however, we find the, that better leadership can be built based on these tools and stages, which requires a reallocation of responsibilities and involvement. We draw some conclusions based on this comparison that both leader and coach promote action but at different level leader promotes action at the organizational level while coach promotes action at the behavior level of the individual a second conclusion is that in a coaching process the coach does not lead guide or decide what the team or coachee has to do the coach only accompanies the person so that the person, the individual, becomes aware of own skills and abilities. And from these conclusions, we have further questions to discuss, but we just take these questions. And hopefully by the end of this we webinar, we will be able to find some insight. So, to establish your own goals, what is your balance? between happiness and responsibilities. And also, when the follower of the leader is empowered, the leader has the capability to become a coach. So this would be my first part for the webinar. And I'm inviting now Alexandra Badica to keep on. Thank you so much, Christina, and uh, thank you for uh, the introduction. Those are really good points, and it uh, brings a lot of insights around leadership and coaching. And this will bring us to uh, the part where we look at the pillars that we identified in terms of well-being, how to create that well-being. And as part of coaching, a coach wants to empower their coaches to have that strength and that well-being, both in their personal uh, level and also as a team and in their workplace. So based on the needs that we identified, uh, especially in the maritime industry, we wanted to bring the basis and the foundations for three main topics. And the first one, which relates uh, also to one of the questions that Christina mentioned in the conclusion about the balance between our happiness and our growth. And that is emotional and mental health. We want to address this because it's one of the most powerful topics and one of the best aspects that we want to look at when it comes to our growth, our transformation, and how we show up in our work. 
And why is mental health important? It's the way that we perform in our workplace is related to our uh, well-being and how we feel. And making sure that we have a good relationship with ourselves will impact the way that we interact with the people around us, with our colleagues, with um, the other crew members, whether it's onshore or offshore. And one way that we want to do this is through mindfulness. So I'm going to um, talk about some powerful techniques and very easy to implement because I really want you to leave this webinar with some easy to implement uh, ways that you can apply right away and that you will use for yourself and maybe also uh, suggest to the people around you so that you will see the results in uh, time. Mindfulness is one way to boost our emotional health and the way that we want to take care of ourselves. What does mindfulness mean? It means that we are present. It means that we are connected and we are in touch with our senses. We focus on what we see with our eyes, what we can touch with our uh, hands, what we smell, what we taste, and we, what we hear. And with all of this, we are brought into the present moment. We are connected to the reality. So how can we bring more mindfulness into our life, whether it's at work or outside of work? Most importantly is to find moments of presence and peace and reconnection. And you can do that in different ways. For instance, when you um, have a busy day, you can just find a couple of minutes to go to a quiet place and just take a few deep breaths and bring yourself back into the moment. That is one way to find presence. Another way would be to connect to your uh, sense of taste. For instance, during your lunch break, we tend to have uh, multitasking. We want to do different other things, to talk to our colleagues or maybe to check our uh, phones. But instead, try to find, even if it's just for a couple of minutes, try to really focus on the taste of your food. That is another way to be mindful. These moments of presence and reconnection are actually helpful for our brain because it eases that tension. If we constantly go through our day being busy with activities and different tasks, our brain is in a constant tension, but with moments of presence and mindfulness, we relax that tension in our mind and we become more present. Another way is to implement healthy routines. What does that mean? It means that we uh, implement in our daily parts some moments of self-care. For instance, in the morning, you can have a couple of minutes when you can take a few deep breaths, you can choose to meditate or maybe journal, maybe do a little bit of physical movement so that you set yourself up for a really good day. Or you can choose to have a routine in the evening before you go to sleep, whether before you go in bed or when you put your head on your pillow, maybe find a way to practice gratitude, maybe find a way to meditate or to practice breathing. These healthy routines will support you in strengthening your mental health because it is just as powerful to take care of our mental health as it is to take care of our physical health. And it also boosts our immune system. And we all know how important it is to have our immune system working at uh, high levels. Another mindful practice is gratitude. You can think about what you're grateful for. Very many times we are so consumed of, of, of our current realities that we just look at what we're lacking of and the things that we don't have, what makes us unsatisfied and unhappy, and we focus on those things. 
try to shift that uh, thinking and look at what you're grateful for. Look at the things that are working for you. Look at, for instance, how you are feeling good, you're healthy, and you are grateful for your family. You are grateful for even small things like the cup of coffee that you have in the morning or the sound of the waves if you're on the ship. Uh, find ways to get grateful and thankful for what is around you. Very many times we get stressed, yeah? And stress is the biggest enemy that we all face in our day-to-day -day lives. And this is why we want to find ways to also decompress and to reduce that stress. And here we have a few techniques that are very easy to implement and that are also very important to bring more into our lives. Every time when you feel stressed and when you feel that you are uh, more angry or maybe you feel like uh, you get easily um, triggered by something that happens around you. So one way would be to implement some breathing exercises. Like I was mentioning before, it connects you to the present moment. Or you can start writing down about stress and how that makes you feel. How does stress feel in your body? How does it feel in your mind? Maybe some body movement because that also boosts our level of happiness and good mood when we uh, either do a short workout or even just dancing can help to, you know, get your body moving and make your energy uh, levels go up. You can try meditation. That is also another very great way to connect within and to reduce stress and to relax your mind. You can listen to music. That is uh, a very good way and even music therapy is a, a way that is practiced by very many people to decompress. Sleep also is very important. When we are sleep deprived, we don't work at the same capacities and we feel that we are tired, we uh, get easily angry and uh, sometimes maybe we react to situations around us with more negativity and that way uh, we create that stress, uh, not only with, our, with ourselves, but also to the people around us. And it's also important to communicate, find people to talk to and to implement that listening that we were talking about um, in coaching and that Christina was mentioning as well. And I'm going to also uh, bring it uh, back a little bit later. So now I'm going to invite you to do a couple of exercises so that we can test out these stress reducing techniques and that you can later uh, implement them as well in your routines or maybe uh, to also take them further to the people around you, to your colleagues and your team members. Uh, Alexandra, uh, yes? don't mind please. We have uh, two participants that would, would like to tell us something. Uh, shall yes. we listen to them and after that we start the exercises? Yeah, sure, absolutely, we can do that. Okay, so we had uh, uh, Singh, Shashank Singh, you raised the hand. Yeah, yeah, here, Shashank Singh. Yes, would you like to add or ask something? Yeah, uh, I'm here just because of Alexandra, ma'am. Uh, I got a reference from Instagram, I'm following uh, her uh, uh, since uh, I mean uh, four three uh, three to four months yeah uh, recently I have completed my ETO course I am an electrical technical officer and uh, almost I have selected uh, I have been selected in a MUX, uh, but uh, waiting for the joining uh, as I am uh, Indian so here uh, coronavirus came in March month and uh, cases are uh, increasing day by day. So I have been living in the single room. Uh, I I made uh, myself locked down in the single room. So basically, uh, for my meditation, I do yoga every day in the morning, and uh, uh, I drink uh, some uh, Ayurvedic tea that is uh, very helpful to uh, make me stable in this situation. So, uh, ma'am, uh, I would like to know. Uh, how to improve my, I mean, uh, 
uh, that I'm going to you know do work do work on board ship in the marks. So I would be uh, working for a six month. So how can I uh, you know uh, survive on board ship? Because I never you know I never been on board ship. So this is the first time for me. Can you please tell me? Uh, thank you very much for your question, uh, Singh. Uh, so, Alexandra, uh, there is this uh, issue of uh, uh, a long time of staying inside with no social connection. Uh, either you can uh, say some uh, thoughts or the other, Alexandra, which one of you? Yeah, from my perspective, thank you so much for, for the question. Uh, from my perspective, in terms of mindfulness and implementing um, mindfulness, even when you are on board, find uh, time for those healthy routines. Uh, I'm sure that it's going to be different. It's not like a nine to five uh, job, but even if you have five minutes and do some yoga, do some meditation, uh, in the morning or maybe at the end of the work day, that will bring some balance because I'm sure that um, there will be um, times of stress, but at the same time, it's important to find that connection with ourselves in all situations. And, you know, you brought up lockdown and absolutely we all went through uh, that stress of being in lockdown and exactly having those um, healthy routines and healthy practices was the way to get through that. Uh, so that would be my, uh, my insight. And I'm sure Alexandra will have another, um, some more insights from uh, being on the ship. <laughs> well, this is, um, this is a very good uh, question, actually, how to survive <laughs> on board ship six months after you've been in lockdown and so on. So basically, when you are on board ship, your first reward, as uh, Ms. Baditza said, is the food. After you work four hours in the morning, lunch will be your best reward. So take your time, enjoy it, live it like it's the moment of your life because you will have to work again four hours <laughs> in the best case. Maybe you will have to work then, who knows? And the dinner will be your second reward. By the end of the day, what I practice is five minutes of meditation. I always do this. And before going to work, I prepare myself exactly as you see me. I put myself earrings, I put myself my wristwatch, so it's kind of a reward for starting the job. Of course, when I do some kind of jobs on deck and I cannot wear them, at least I look in the mirror and I'm telling to myself, today is another day we can do it. So practice this kind of healthy routines. Keep yourself positive. Encourage yourself by yourself. Of course, you can be encouraged by others also, by your leaders on board. But sometimes people after sitting many months at sea, they lose their leadership skills and it's totally understandable. But then you have to take the strings. So you have to encourage the people. Maybe you are new and you have more power than the others. So just try to practice this kind of small rewards for yourself. Maybe even buying one small chocolate from the slop chest at the end of the week it might be the best reward ever you received. So try to find some small joys, um, some, I don't know, some treats, some small treats. That's, that's it. And you will survive for sure. My mm, biggest contract was seven months and I came home with a smile on my face. So <laughs> if I made it as a girl on board among 27 men, anybody can make it, trust me. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, Alexandra. Uh, do we have other questions or should we proceed further? Okay, if not, let me just uh, prepare. Uh, okay, Alexandra, we are listening for your exercises. Thank you, yes. Uh, so now we will have some uh, very short examples of exercises that you can also practice on board and off um, uh, shore as well. And hopefully these will help you, especially in the moments of tension, because these um, two exercises that I'm going to introduce you to are uh, simple tools 
in the, that you can use in the moment when you feel stressed or when you feel that uh, you have so much going on and you are really overwhelmed. Just uh, take a moment, go into a very quiet room or go in the toilet and just uh, close your eyes. And we're going to do this now together. Uh, use your, you can use your um, right hand and place it on your belly, on your abdomen, so that you can feel the deep breathing. And uh, you can close your eyes and we're going to do this exercise, which is also uh, known as 478 because we're going to breathe in for four uh, counts. Then we're going to hold the breath for seven counts and we're going to exhale for eight counts. And we're going to do this three times and I'm going to count so that you can follow my count and you focus on your breathing and on my voice. Is that okay? Okay, so with your right hand on your belly first and uh, uncrossing your legs and sitting with your spine straight, close your eyes. And now we're going to exhale all the air from your lungs. Yeah, making sure that you let go. And now we're going to breathe in through your nose for Three, two, one, hold it. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and release. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And again, breathing in through your nose. Four, three, two, one, hold it. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and release. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And one more time, breathing in. Three, two, one, hold it. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and release. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Now you can open your eyes, shake your hands a little bit, maybe move your shoulders a little bit. And this is a really good breathing exercise that will decompress your mind and it will release the stress. You can, if you feel dizzy, then it's absolutely normal because with this exercise, what we're doing is we're actually bringing more oxygen into our brain. And most of the times we don't get to do that, which means that when we pay attention to our breathing, the oxygen actually makes us feel dizzy. So don't worry. And also in time, when you practice this, you will see that, that you will start counting slower. I now I counted for you in a very um, normal pace and when you're going to do this by yourself in time you will start slowing down and it, and it will be for the breathing in it will be four three two one yeah so pay attention how this exercise will help you through time. You can do this exercise only with three breaths every time, yeah, and you can practice it any time that you need. There is nothing bad that will happen to you if you practice this breathing exercise. And of course, please do share in the chat how you feel after this exercise. I'm also going to invite you now to do another exercise, and for this one, uh, if you have pen and paper uh, next to you, it will be really great, but you can also use the chat uh, to write down three things that you are grateful for right now in this moment. What are you grateful for? You can write them down in your notebook or you can share them with us in the chat. Just take a couple of minutes and write down three things that you're grateful for. 
I don't know what to write at number three. I'm thinking. You can be grateful for, thank you so much for sharing. Um, uh, you can be grateful for big things. Yeah, like you mentioned here, life and family. And you can be grateful for small things as well, such as your uh, internet connection that helps us to be connected. You can be grateful for the coffee that you had in the morning. You can be grateful for your um, children, maybe something that your kids told you today. Uh, you can be grateful for the smallest, kindest okay. things or for the big things like um, health, family, okay. home, work. Yes, do we have a question? No, okay. Uh, I wanted to also say thank you to Maria because um, uh, she shared with us uh, her breathing practice, which is also very good for four to uh, do this breathing practice to inhale for four, holding for four counts, exhaling and holding. And that's also a really great practice. There are very many breathing practices that we can implement. And of course, they help us in the moment to reconnect with, our, with ourselves. And it's really um, great to find, especially the practice that is very much helping us because we're all different and unique and we want to find the practices and exercises that help us in the moment. So make sure that you keep trying different breathing techniques and find the one that really helps you. Okay, thank you so much. I see here in the chat being grateful for health, for family, work, friends, career. That is really, really great. And make sure that you use this exercise at least once a day. As you have seen, it only takes 10 seconds, 30 seconds to think about what you're grateful for. And that will set you up in the morning for a really good day. And it will bring you into the moment to be grateful for what you have because we spend so much time focusing on what we don't have, on what it's not working, on uh, the fact that, you know, we might be um, far away from our families or you, that you are on a ship for a very long time. Instead, try to find ways that you are grateful for, for what you have around you. Yeah, and practice this as much as possible. Okay, so thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for being part of this exercise and the breathing exercise as well. And uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Uh, yes, thank you, Bogdan, for um, mentioning this. Yes, we all put health first, uh, but we don't appreciate it. That's very true. And this is something that we tend to appreciate more when we are sick. We realize that um, health is so precious when we don't have it. And that is why it's important to make sure we take care of ourselves and of our physical and mental health even in the times when we feel good, when we feel healthy, because it's, you know, it's important to just keep having that health. It's not going to be there uh, all the time unless we actually maintain it. Yeah, it's just like with any device that we have, we need to keep it in main maintenance. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm going to uh, pass on uh, now the microphone over to Christina. Uh, I'm just uh, thinking to what Shashank Singh uh, said, like to be grateful for others' life. And I'm just, uh, well, some food for thought here. Okay. Uh, let me uh, prepare my next uh, presentation. Uh, sorry for the interruption, but I would say something. Yes, sure. Yeah, Shashank here. Okay, okay. We are let me camera yes. put on. Yeah. Uh, since my childhood, my upbringing in a moderate family, uh, nuclear moderate, and uh, my mother is a homemaker. And uh, about talk to my father, he is a farmer. He feed many people to farm by farming. So uh, I am and uh, my whole family have been. Yeah, I know, uh, careful for the others people also. So I do social work 
to so i thought uh, i am going to do a job on board ship uh, because of not money of course i if i do work there i will get a i will i will get a pay for that but i want to do something for uh, uh, those who don't have money to uh, get a you know basic education mm-hmm. so i have written i do care for others as well for me also and uh, yeah of course exercise is a very important thing so i do um, this thing mm-hmm. so i am very sorry if anyone my uh, no my thanks. family my family is important for me and uh, i do my work uh, with you know sincerely i am a hard working guy so yeah i uh, sometime i live with uh, i live with others people too who who is poor around me i see so i don't i can't uh, resist myself when i see a uh, people who they are very needy to get help so that's why i written that's there that's great that's great and we congratulate you for this okay great thank, thank we'll you move on to the next presentation that would be some my time coaching exercises that i thought for you and we uh, in such exercises we will discuss about different perspectives and as a basic introduction you just you should think to my time coaching by default like a pillar for stability it's like an offshore rig that should provide you stability but the question is how can we find our own maritime coach if we don't have such a coach on board vessel so maritime coaching involves many things from motivation from development goals from certain skills that the, the person that pretends to be a coach should have also uh, involves a lot of um, supporting and advice but especially from my point of view i would like to stress that since kindergarten since childhood we were all surrounded by coaches but probably we did not just realize that so a coach can be someone that is there for you assist you in many things in many ways a coach can be a parent a coach can be um, a teacher but of course such cases should be analyzed because not everybody understands they have such coaching attitudes and nobody thinks and analyzes their coaching attitudes that should be further developed so i have prepared for you a short very short exercise on coaching and i'm um, uh, i'm inviting you to look at this image it is an image where you find what you should tell me what do you see in this image maybe you girls can you help me i think we're getting some responses in the chat as well peace light calm sunrise oh that's so great okay thank you very much for your interaction but what about this image so what do you see here what are your feelings looking at this image I can share that I see a party. <laughs> oh, yes. I imagine Sounds a party great. on the boat. <laughs> Sounds great, but please focus a bit on the environment. Okay, calm. Yes. You see a lot of calm environment. Indeed. Well, the exercise is about different perspectives because if you would carefully compare the first image this one 
with the second image, you would understand that this first image is a perception of is a perception of someone that is unsure, and the second image is taken by someone who is on a vessel, someone who is offshore. Therefore, we have different perspectives. And from these different perspectives, our thoughts are different. Therefore, a maritime coach should take into account such different perspectives and should understand better this very calm attitude obviously outside storms and bad wind, also this calm attitude, but also the coach should understand that there is such a huge amount of water and sometimes you just sail and sail and there is no ship around you and there is always this close environment for six months, like our friend told us, for eight months, 10 months now with the pandemic, and of course, we love to be surrounded by calm, but I'm just wondering, sometimes maybe too much calm, is it good or not? This would be uh, my first uh, exercise about sharing perspectives and thinking to multiple perspectives. The second exercise would be an exercise that I would apply with my students. It is called turning the life raft. And you can see here all the perspectives of this exercise, like what material you would need, what equipment, a life raft, or else if you don't have a life raft, you can uh, imagine and use something similar to a life raft. It can be flattened if you are in an inner space, such as the classroom. The life raft does not need to be computer operated. The space, a closed environment, can be inside the classroom, inside a training room, on board vessel, or in open space on a deck. The duration of the exercise should be about 30 minutes. And the people, the trainees, the coaches, will be involved in turn deck the life raft, everyone on the group should uh, stand on. And the group aim is to flip the life raft over in the fastest time. Nobody must step off the life raft. If anyone put their foot on floor, the experience must be repeated. And such kind of exercise can be uh, redesigned in different conditions, depending on the condition. But the key coaching understanding is the following. The coaches should focus on team working and on collaboration. Listening and questioning between the students is also um, desirable thing to do and also discussing and integration of different ideas and different perspectives. Final, the open question will be addressed to the group. Did anyone view the life raft task as impossible? How did team members try to keep everyone on the life raft? And eventually, did the group cheat in order to, set, uh, to make the exercise successful? So this would be in large lines my exercises for you now. And I would uh, also like to share you some other things to think about, like the crossroad choices. You see here two types of crossroads. Uh, often in life we meet crossroads that make us follow a certain choice, a certain decision. And in general, these moments are so difficult that we desperately need someone to guide us. Whether it's God, whether it's a friend, uh, either, either it's a colleague, a family member. So we must identify a person to talk to. And if on board vessel we don't have such a friend to talk to, then just follow up Alexandra's tip, Alexandra's exercise, take a sheet of paper and start writing. And finally, I will share with you a secret of success in case of coaching. 
don't just accumulate knowledge. We are so happy you are here today with us and you accumulate knowledge, very useful knowledge. We are also um, hoping you will attend other seminars, other webinars and other educational programs to accumulate knowledge. But what you should understand is that you should think how to use your knowledge in order to do action, in order to create concrete results. Thank you for now for your attention and I pass the floor again to Alexandra. Thank you so much. And um, that actually comes very, um, as a really great connection to my next exercises in the following uh, pillars, because we have been talking about the first one, which was emotional and mental health. And another, um, another type of uh, struggle that we have identified and that you have mentioned as well. And we're going to talk about those tips on um, connection and listening. We uh, have seen that work and life balance is also um, very important to maintain, of course. And when it comes to being on sea, that means that you are away from your family for a long time, which means that you are uh, inclining the balance more towards work and that's when it can become more stressful. So it's important to make sure that you find ways to cope with this situation and to um, relax that stress and that tension that comes with missing your dear ones or from having uh, different news coming from home and so on. Now the way that I like to look at this is integration, work-life integration instead of balance. Why integration? Because when we talk about balance, we see these two pieces as very separate. But how can we integrate them? Very many times we try to uh, put on a mask when we are working and we try to put our emotions aside, but it's inevitable because we're not robots, so we will have emotions. So if there is something uh, going on in our life, in our personal life, then of course we will, have, uh, we will not have such a good day and we will feel less um, cold to do our work. We will feel maybe slower uh, when we do our tasks and of course it has an impact on us. So why do we need to find ways to uh, cope with that? Because we have to integrate these two aspects. Now let's look at some techniques um, that we can use when it comes to uh, this work-life integration and understanding these emotions and how they are integrated between our personal life and our professional lives. And um, one way is of course, to be more understanding and kind with each other. So in all interactions that we have with the other crew members, we try to, we try to see the way that we are right. Yeah, we feel that we are always right and the other person is wrong. But so, so many times it's not a personal conflict, it's just something that the other person is going through. So just keep in mind that everyone you talk to, everyone that you interact with, even on a daily basis, you might not even know what type of battle they are fighting and what is going on in their personal life. And they might be going through something that you don't know anything about. So just remember to be kind and understanding all the time. It's uh, something that we can learn to cultivate more in all, our, all the aspects of our lives to be more kind, to be more inclined to uh, allow people to be vulnerable and to share what they're going through. And this leads me to the next way, to the next uh, tip that you can also implement. And it, it means that, you know, even when you don't have um, a coach on board or when you uh, don't have necessarily um, a way to connect with uh, the people uh, who are at home, you want to communicate how you feel. 
this is where that integration comes into place. Find someone in uh, your team to talk to or offer your time to listen to someone who is going through a hard time. Like I was saying earlier, you don't know what the other person is going through and you might see that they are struggling. They might not be in the same good mood that you see them all the time. So create that safe space for them to open up and to share and ask questions. Be genuinely curious and interested about what they're going through and be there for them. This is where you practice that presence as well. In coaching, we talk about that as being an active listening because we want to create that space where the people in front of us are open to share whatever it is. As coaches, we don't guide you, we allow you to find that guidance. So you can also use this technique. You can ask the other person, how are you feeling? Do you want to talk about it? And then carry on with that conversation. Perhaps you notice that you are going through something similar or maybe you have gone through something similar and you want to share that with them to establish that emotional bond. You know that any conversation is an exchange of stories. So you might want to share something as well, but make sure that you don't take away the spotlight from the story of the person who is sharing first. Take turns in sharing, take turns in opening up and make sure that you are there for them. Sometimes they may not even need advice or recommendations. They just need someone to listen. So when you practice this listening, you are not going to give any judgments. You are not going to say, oh, this is not good, or you shouldn't be like this. You're just going to listen. You're not going to offer unsolicited advice. And, you know, in coaching, we don't give advice. And we're not going to interrupt the other person. We're just going to listen to them. So next time when you see someone maybe who is not in their uh, best shape, just ask them, how are you feeling? And do you want to talk about it? And create that safe space for them and try to see if there is a conversation that you can have with them. And of course, um, just like uh, Christina was mentioning as well, journal when you don't feel safe to and comfortable to share with someone else you can just get your uh, get the notebook or a journal and start writing down about how you are feeling you can start with writing today i had a hard time because and then you can just write about your feelings your thoughts your emotions or you can write something like I feel sad when I think about, and then write about uh, what is giving you that um, feeling of sadness. Or you can try to shift your mood from when you are in a, a low space and you feel uh, that you miss your family so much when you're away from them, for instance, and you're on the ship, then try to connect with positive feelings and with positive memories and write down the best memory I have with my family is when and just start writing down because that will shift your thinking from focusing on being away from them into reconnecting with those beautiful memories that you have with them. So try to do uh, these exercises and try to put these um, skills into practice. Be more kind. Listen to someone who is going through a hard time and journal. Keep a journal with you and start writing down. Now I'm going to uh, pass the microphone over to uh, Christina for the next uh, step and then we will continue with some more exercises. If there are any questions, please do feel free to share them in the chat or uh, share them with us. Thank you very much, Alexandra. Uh, it's so great you 
have so many good exercises. <laughs> okay, and also we are waiting for your opinions. Uh, just feel free to write them in the chat section. Meanwhile, my third part will be something related to maritime coaching for seafarer women. Again, the presentation that I prepare for you is based on research that I previously done with my colleagues from uh, gender equality research. And uh, now we are talking about the role of the maritime coach. We have concluded in my uh, previous part that the maritime coach compared to the maritime leader has the duty to guide the coaching and to assist. The role of the maritime coach is to ensure the coachee is properly guiding to open its own, his or her own strengths and capabilities. And I asked you previously, what to do if we don't have a maritime coach on board ship? And I introduced uh, the exercise of Alexandra with the journal, writing the journal. But based on our uh, research, we discovered that, in fact, a lot of very good coaching opinions and perspectives are found from individuals like seafarer women that were interviewed in 2018 during our study. We used a scientific research tool, a structured online interviews, and we compiled all these answers coming from seafarer women. I, so we asked them, what advice would you give to females who want to pursue a career in seafaring? And we discovered something really awesome, really great. They replied with their own experience based on, our, on their own expertise and their own um, events they were passing through. And I would just like to briefly read some of their advices to understand how a support group like a seafarer group would do a huge help for motivating other seafarer women. For example, a Filipino seafarer woman replied, you must have the courage and strong heart to follow your dreams in life. A Belgian, fight for what you love. Again, Filipino, seafaring is a very challenging job. For you to prevail, you must know your rights and must know the right people who can help you when things go wrong. Respect can't be bought, nor it can be forced on people. You have to earn it. I really like this idea. You can start by respecting yourself. Another opinion, stay strong and be positive all the time. This uh, Alexandra, in fact, is also a uh, part of what you are saying. Don't let men intimidate you because they are men. Work with them. So cooperation is the key word here. Show your worth as part of the team. Never let your gender be a hindrance to your career. Be dedicated to your work. Again, uh, here I conclude a focus on professionalism. A seafarer woman should be a professional from the first step on board vessel in her working space. Prove that female can also contribute to the development of maritime industry so that more companies will hire and accept female se seafarers to work on board. In uh, our scientific research tool, other nationalities replied. We had also Romanian, Swiss, Australian, uh, British, uh, here are only 18 uh, replies, but in total there are much more. And I mentioned there the published um, paper where you can find all of them. And in the end, I would like to read uh, an Australian seafarer woman opinion. She said, you have every right to pursue your dream. Don't be disheartened by other people's experiences. Don't set yourself aside from your male colleagues. 
get in there, lift the heavy things, and do the dirty jobs. Let your attitude and your work speak for themselves. You will encounter people who are threatened by you. Kill them with your kindness. Don't let the societal pressure of marriage and children get in the way of what you want and most importantly, wear sunscreen. So these are only a few things that I thought necessary to share with you from my academic uh, previous experience. And uh, for the next webinar, I will prepare some scientific facts about resilient coach versus the, versus the perspective of, of my time digital leader. So for now, this is in large lines what I wanted to share with you. So I will let now my colleagues, both the Alexandras, continue their part. Thank you very much. Uh, I wanted to address uh, one of the questions in the chat before um, I move on to the next part. Um, Caroline says, uh, could you talk a bit more about not giving advices as a coach? Uh, yes, in, in coaching, uh, we don't give advice because in coaching, it's about focusing on the person in front of us, on the coachee. And the expert in their life is themselves. We cannot be as coaches expert in someone else's life. So we are only there as a coach to support them and to give them that space for them to develop, to feel safe, to share what they're going through and to set their uh, growth, their goals for their transformation and to give them some um, encouragement and to keep them accountable for what they're doing. But we don't give them advice because advice means that it would come from our experience. What we can do is we can perhaps share uh, from our experience, but not as giving advice, just mentioning from the beginning, this is my experience. So it's just um, very, uh, important to make sure that the spotlight is on the person in front of us and on the coachee. The coach is there just to hold the space and to give guidance and to hold uh, the hand of the coachee, but not to point them in the direction because the coachee is the one who knows best. I hope that um, it, that responds to the question. And Caroline, if you have more questions, please do um, share them with us in the chat. Uh, so I'm going to go now to the next pillar because it's really important, especially in the context that Christina just shared in terms of uh, women on board and uh, in the maritime industry overall. And Focusing on our personal and professional growth is very important when it comes to uh, looking at how we are pursuing our dreams and how we're not allowing anything, any uh, gender biased opinions to stop us or any, uh, any other um, social pressure to put a stop on our dreams. But in order to be able to do that, we need to focus on our personal and professional growth. And when it comes to growth, uh, we sometimes do the same things over and over again, and we expect different results. And you might have heard this quote, that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Of course, this is not going to happen. When we do the same thing over and over, we will have the same results and there will be no growth, there will be no transformation. Instead, to transform ourselves and to be more self-confident, to earn that respect, that was a very beautiful point, um, Christina, thank you for sharing that, to earn that respect and to make sure that we follow that dream and we put those um, uh, boundaries to what is not serving us, we need to focus on our transformation and our well-being. And with that comes continuous learning. We want to be always um, in touch with more 
um, knowledge and how we can improve ourselves, how we can be better for our uh, mental health, but also for the interactions with the people around us, whether they're at work or outside of the workplace. And of course, just like Christina was saying, it's not just about accumulating that knowledge. We can, of course, read a lot of books and attend many seminars, but it's also about putting into practice and how we actually do that. And that is how we will start seeing the results by shifting and transforming the way that we act and the way that we do those things by implementing healthy routines, for instance, by um, being more kind, by listening to someone who is going through something um, difficult. There is a mental health organization in New Zealand that uh, proposes these five uh, topics when it comes to personal and professional growth. And we have already covered uh, we have covered connection, yeah, when we listen to someone, when we uh, talk to someone and share about what we're going through. We have talked about giving, giving kindness, giving time to those around us. We have talked about taking notice, meaning being self-aware and understanding and grounding ourselves in the present moment. We shared about keep. Uh, learning because that will contribute to our growth and about being active. Now, what we mean by being active is both physically because it will help us with um, our physical health, but also learning, being actively involved in our growth process and in our learning process. And what I notice mostly in, as a coach when I talk to people is that people are focused on the lack of strength. And when we cover learning and transformation, they focus on, well, I'm not good at these skills, so I have to improve them. But it's also important to acknowledge our strengths to acknowledge what we are good at. And this following exercise is going to put the spotlight on that. So I'm going to invite you once again to take the, uh, the pen and paper and to write down uh, something based on this context. Think about the challenge that you have been through and how you managed to overcome it. It's better to choose something that you have already overcome, that is something from the past, something that you have healed from, instead of something that you're currently going through. But think about what you learned, what overcoming that situation showed you about yourself. What strengths did you find in yourself to overcome that challenge? And what did you learn about yourself and your abilities? Take a little bit of time and write it down. And of course, if you feel comfortable to share uh, something about a challenge and what you learned about yourself, please do share it either in the chat or just unmute yourself and um, share it so we can um, hear about your strengths. I'm just going to give you a little bit of time. You know, I'm still thinking, Alexandra. Hmm. <laughs> but I Is it... Something. You are thinking about uh, a challenge, to identify a challenge? It doesn't have to be something big. It can be something very small. I guess there are so many that I cannot choose, choose the best. Okay. Yes, someone is sharing motivation. Yes, that's very true. When we overcome something, we realize that 
we can have that motivation inside of us. If it's important for us, then we can find the motivation and the strength to overcome, to find solutions, uh, preparing yourself to pass the barriers. Exactly. Yeah. Think about whether it was a challenge at work, maybe it was a difficult conversation or in your personal life. What did you learn about yourself and your abilities? I know sometimes it's difficult because like I was mentioning, yeah, it's easier to look at what we are not good at instead of looking at the skills and the strengths that we have. And this is why this exercise is really important. Looking for better results and achieve your goal. Yes, thank you for, for sharing in the chat. Is anyone ready to share? If you're not comfortable to share the challenge, you can just share with us the strengths that you have, the strength that you identified in yourself. Even if it's just one word, I would like to hear from as many of you because I know this is difficult and it takes you out of your comfort zone because we are so focused on the skills and the abilities that we don't have and we forget to acknowledge what we're good at. So if you could please type in the chat box or just unmute yourself and give us one word, that will be all. Resilience, yes. Alexandra, it's good to uh, read some of them because uh, on bro broadcasting, we cannot see the chat. Yes, I am going through the answers now. Uh, so I'm a multitasker. However, I'm learning to say no so that I can focus more on production tasks. Yes, that is a very good uh, strength, uh, saying no. That's very good. The challenge showed me that I'm able to do everything with a bit of research, even if I don't know anything about it. Yes, that's so powerful. Yes, that makes me ambitious and not being afraid to overcome new things. Improvise, adapt, overcome sometimes does the trick. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Start before being ready because very many times we just put barriers to ourselves because we feel we're not ready for doing something. But once we start doing it, we learn along the way. And that shows us that we're ambitious and we don't have to be afraid of new things and new opportunities. So thank you so much for sharing, Elif. Resilience, yes. Able to accomplish things at very short notice. Won't know unless I did it. Yes. So basically working well under pressure and when you have a short deadline, that's a very great strength to be aware of. I was once questioned by my boss about what I was asking for developing a certain business. So I answered, okay, if we don't do this, we will lose the business, but it is your decision. The result was that my boss finally did what I was asking for and the business was very profitable. So I transferred the responsibility to him and he felt responsible and he did what I asked. So you learned to speak up and to um, state your opinion, which is really important as well, and to pass that um, responsibility to, um, uh, to give the, the responsibility to someone because they can be accountable for it as well. Very good. I discovered that even though I'm young, I can inspire other people. 
Very, very good. Yes, exactly. We have this in us. It, it's only a matter of being open and sharing from our experience because you never know. Even, you know, so many times we feel that, oh, nobody will care about our story or about our experiences. But in fact, if you open up and share something that you are uh, going through or maybe something that you read about, even if it's just one person who gets value out of it, that is going to be Im very important. It will maybe change their life. They will remember that lesson. Maybe it's something that they really needed to hear in that moment. And you are an inspiration to them. So always be open to sharing with other people. Um, and that is carried sometimes that happens with everyone, even those who are really successful. Yeah, well, exactly. Thank you very much for all your opinions. Uh, let's move a bit further, yeah, because we have like six more minutes and every, anyway, we will exceed the time, but I hope nobody, nobody gets upset of that. Um, let me pass the floor to the other Alexandra, uh, Alexandra Chukanu. Please share your perspective with us. Well, um, I will make a short conclusion. <laughs> um, be careful with yourselves on the way to mindfulness because there is an effect called frog, def frog effect and I will talk a little bit about it. You know, the frog has the uh, capability to adapt herself in environment. What they did, they took the frog, they put it at a temperature in some water and they start increasing the temperature and increasing it. And the frog was still adapting and still adapting until the frog finally started to boil. So she died. Be careful with adapting yourself to some situation. Put yourself stress holds. What I understood about myself and my abilities is that I am very um, sincere with the job. And um, even that I overcome some very bad situations at a point, uh, I understood that the only person that can make me happy or upset is myself. The problem that I always had, it was empathy. I was always empathizing with people's feelings. Some of them are not so positive as you. And they were making me feel a little bit um, upset. They were giving me some of their bad feelings. But uh, when I was changing myself, of course, the situation was getting worse. So this is, this is not uh, something that um, it was supposed to happen. The situation should have get improved. So eventually I understood and I learned about my capabilities is that in order to overcome situations, you have to overcome your emotions. Think about yourself as being a sponge. If you are full of water, then the water that is coming more, you cannot grab it. It's impossible. So you need to squeeze the sponge and then to grab new skills. Do this daily with this practice that Ms. Badita showed us in this evening and that uh, Ms. Dragomir presented. Try to squeeze yourself from the past emotions. You cannot expect, as Alexandra said, to receive different results from doing the same thing. This is impossible. So try to change a little bit. Get rid of the things that may hurt yourself in the past days in order to overcome the new challenges. Basically, what I'm saying is whenever you put your head on the pillow, try to practice, to practice this well-being a little bit, a little bit today, a little bit more tomorrow, a little bit the next day after tomorrow. And believe me, it takes 30 seconds, 30 minutes, maybe three hours to learn skills that can save your life skills that you will use for your whole life. Think about how you learn how to drive the car. You learn it in some lessons and you are using it for your whole life. It's the same with the well-being as well. If you want to be healthy, if you want to overcome the challenges in your life, if you want to help the others, if you want to live a happy life, just take your time to learn the correct skills. So consider self-improvement every single day. Now, because I didn't know exactly that I will be able to join this session, 
since I'm on board and I have challenges every time and uh, the phone might ring at any point, so I have to go. I made a short video about the thing that I faced since I started this maritime career the most. It's called unconscious bias and Miss Christina Dragomir will play it. And by the end of my... Um, of my uh, speech, I would like to thank everybody for attending our webinar and I hope this will be just the beginning of a beautiful coach journey. Okay, let me just use the technology to help me. Okay. Uh, please confirm you can see the uh, you can see the video. Uh, no, not yet. Mm -hmm, okay. Only what, the link. Now we now can you see it? Yes. Good. Good. I feel audience and colleagues. I feel honored and in the same time. Uh, we can't hear it. I'm not sure if... Uh, I barely uh, can hear her voice. Yeah, uh, Christina, maybe you can also share with the computer sound? Of course. I think I, I'm stop sharing and I will share it again. I think. Wait. 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 Okay, so share screen, share computer sound, okay. And the ignition. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay. Yes, and colleagues, okay, I perfect. feel honored and in the same time a big responsibility to be part of Wista International. Today I'm going to touch a subject which is a little bit controversial in the industry, but I have been facing it since I started my career. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Alexandra. I am a third officer. I work on passenger ships at the moment. I started my career five years ago and I passed throughout different types of ships like roro packs and container carriers and in the end now in the passenger industry and the cruise life. Today's topic is unconscious bias, which I have been facing it and I feel like it's a little bit underrated and it needs to be more than awaked. Look at us, life is so crowded, so busy, we live our life on daily basis assumption, traditions, on the way we grow, whatever pops up in the day, you don't know, lesson learned you have in life, so you create your own background. What if I tell you that daily we have 16,000 thoughts and 14,000 of them are the same thoughts from yesterday or from the day before? So it means like we are spinning in some kind of a circle. We follow just our mindset on the spot like we are on autopilot. So let me give you an example. For instance, you have driving license or you ever ride a bicycle, but you don't learn how to drive it every day. You did your reflexes once, you put yourself into the chair and then you start driving without thinking that from where this comes on or how can you improve your driving skills, you simply drive. And in your mind, while driving, pop up totally different stuff. And you know what? The majority of the accidents happen because our reflexes haven't been awakened. It's because we were on this kind of autopilot. Let me tell you something about our identity and how it's created. On board, I work with maybe nine, six different nationalities at the same time. And the thing is that, you know, we come from a different side of the world and we grow up differently. We have different religions, different sects, we have different traditions. So you have to understand everybody and try to be polite and in the same time not to discriminate. Even that it might be just by chance you do something which you don't feel like it's offending, but you don't know how the other one is feeling because you are in this autopilot. So your identity it's based upon your values, beliefs, behavior, experiences, and of course on your expectations. What we have to do in order to get out of this circle is first of all to recognize and accept the fact that this unconscious bias exists in us. You know, first thing comes first. Just accept it, it's here. Okay, let's see how we can fix it. Because if you don't accept it, it's like you'll be still on autopilot for your whole life. Second thing on the list is to develop the capacity of putting a flashlight on yourself. 
what if somehow maybe you are doing something wrong what if other people see you in a wrong way or maybe they do something that offends you without thinking so first of all you have to put a flashlight on yourself it's like you put a flashlight under your chin and you watch it to the mirror and you see yourself you see your shadows you see your face you see your behaviors and so on third thing on the list is to practice some constructive uncertainty okay you see somebody you already have your mindset regarding this person just by knowing nationality seeing the skin color some clothing or whatever imagine that you have to meet with a person in a blind date for instance a person from Sweden and then in your mom mind pops out a very tall guy like a Viking and maybe he's blonde because he's coming from Sweden you know it's North country and all of a sudden in front of you appears one person which has a different skin tone of color a little bit brownish and it's wearing the wrap clothing and he's telling you that he's Swedish 100% he lived in Sweden for his whole life you'll feel awkward in that moment because you haven't practiced this constructive uncertainty just don't make up your mind on nobody before you see it you have to explore and to exploit the discomfort by passing throughout this unconscious bias okay we admit exists we develop this flashlight we know ourselves we know our faces and we practice this uncertainty but then you have to face the discomfort of getting out of the circle fifth thing that i want to tell you regarding this unconscious bias is to engage the other into conversation to get to meet and to present yourself in a positive role this means that being in a positive role it's admitting that even you come from this country you have this gender you have this religion and some people may think of you this and that so it's kind of okay i admit i have a preconcept maybe before i work with your nationality i work with somebody who looked similar like you but you know i changed my mind regarding this kind of persons because you gave a positive way and i also had this issue in the past so just admit it and engage the positive role between the relationship among you the sixth one and the last is to get the feedback sometimes the feedback is not so nice maybe you'll receive a feedback which might hurt you but in order to move over in your self-development it will not be a paved road maybe it will be like a bumpy one like climbing a mountain and then you know falling down and then climbing again like this is safe so just be patient with yourself, get a feedback and try to understand how to move over and self-develop your lesson learned. So my dear guests, please take your time not to be on autopilot, take your time to self-develop yourself. This kind of conferences give a lot of help and to be honest, now that I have seen very few conferences on maritime environment basis, I realized that in shore side and sea side, job-wise, we kind of behave same. Of course, we have our own particularities on board because here life can be a little bit more hostile, but job wise trust me we work with people we have unconscious bias maybe here it's a little bit more accelerated proportional to the time that you spend cast away from your comfort zone this is third officer alexandra out <laughs> well, thank you very much alexandra let me just stop share thank you you are awesome uh if you can um give some replies or opinions for the chat uh yeah i've seen some uh, people talking about the multinational crew well what, how i see it you know i work on board sometimes with 96 different nationalities imagine how many of us we are and coming from different side of the world with so much different mentality how I see it working with multinational crew is I start to learn how other people live in order to behave myself in front of them. This is very important because at a point you would reach the management level. And to be honest, when you reach that point, you need to listen to everybody. You need to practice this coaching that uh, Ms. Baditza talked about. So how I see it is what we have to do is to try to get as much as we can in regards to 
people, uh, nationality and culture. For instance, I have experienced, I will give you just one example. I have worked with Indian crew, but India is such a huge country that even them in different side of the, the country, they live totally different. It's like a different world. So in order to understand them better, just uh, try to see the person as it is. Maybe it was born in the north, now it's living in the south and so on. I come from the mountainside. Uh, where people are very straight, they talk for themselves instantly. And when I came on the maritime environment, and I saw people so relaxed, sometimes they talk, sometimes they don't. For me, it was very strange. So I have experienced this unconscious bias even in my own country. Living with multinational crew on board is the most important thing that you can have. It's a blessing, believe me. You can uh, get as much as you can from history, culture, traveling. Um, I don't know, for, I love food, so I kind of uh, try all the foods that they have all around the world. So it's a blessing. Think it this way, you know, take, take the culture as it is. Uh, on the other hand, yeah, it's difficult because, you know, they have their costumes and um, maybe they have their own traditions, which you have to respect, but uh, on think it's on both ways. Take the good part and try to understand the things that you have never seen before. And um, kind of that's about it. If you have any kind of questions for me, I will, uh, I will be here to, to, to pick them up. Maybe Ms. Dragomir can read for me because I'm using only my phone here. <laughs> yes, unfortunately, we cannot see you so uh, well, but we can hear you perfectly. If uh, there is uh, anyone of the webinar participants that would like to add something or to share something with us, So, if not, well, um, Miss Alexandra Chukanu, can you say some words of conclusion? And after that, I will pass the floor to Alexandra Bodica, and slowly, slowly, we will end this webinar. I think there is. Uh, sorry, I think there is someone who wants to ask a question in the in the chat. Oh, okay. Can I you see now that. Yeah, I've seen somebody who, who raised the, the hand to tell us it's about attitude. Yeah, it is. It is indeed about attitude. It is about your grown. But you know what? If you start to coach yourself, uh, you will understand that the person who has this attitude, it doesn't have it because this person is a bad person. Sometimes at sea we have bad situations maybe we have some situations at home and we snap maybe we have some situations on board somebody is pushing us maybe sometimes the management is not the most friendly so these people overcome some huge obstacles so in order to get along and to understand that somebody is giving you attitude for a reason try first of all when you see the attitude not to ignore it on you know uh, on expressive way. Ignore it on your inner side. You see somebody giving you attitudes, maybe you look like you are a little bit stressed, maybe you don't understand for what you receive it, but on your inner self, try to calm yourself down and understand this person, maybe it's having an issue behind. So in order to conclude to this well-being, start attending stuff, start attending webinars, start attending coaching events, start implementing the books that you read so you can be a better self in order to expect from the others to be good with you be first of all a better self it kind of that's about it <laughs> okay we will uh, do such webinars again and uh, hopefully we will have better connection hopefully the pandemic will be gone and everybody will be happy and more encouraged to do really, really great things. Alexandra Chukanu, please say a concluding word. So for all seafarers, I have a saying, 
find the best route to your next port of call, but behold, do not be afraid to use the wheel to alter the course towards another port if your port of call is not the one that you wanted to reach. Thank you very much, Alexandra. Alexandra Bodita, the second Alexandra, what are your concluding remarks? Thank you so much. I would say to keep practicing and finding ways to connect with yourself because it's really important, especially because now we only covered the introduction and the, the foundation, the basics of uh, maritime coaching. And this means that you are first working on yourself first so that this way you can improve your relationship with the people around you in your workplace and outside of the workplace. So make sure that you first of all take care of yourself and implement uh, those techniques for your self-care and then uh, the relationship that you have with yourself will be mirrored in the relationship that you have with the other people. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you to all participants for this uh, really great event.